Good evening. Uh, glad to have the opportunity to speak, was to have the Zoom opportunity as well. Glad to have everyone present. Uh, I don't have Blue Angels behind me, so you'll just have to look at curtains. Um, we know from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, that there are certain passages in the Bible that are hard to be understood. The writer there says, especially those writings from Paul the Apostle. Now, due to this, there are certain verses or certain people, rather, that attempt to take certain verses, certain passages, and attempt to pit them against other verses or other passages. This has led to many claiming that the Bible has discrepancies, errors, uh, different problems within the text. Is this indeed the case? Now, I would say that many today and Quite have been for quite some time, are guilty of intellectual laziness. While we must admit that there are certain verses that are difficult to understand, that does not mean that they are impossible to understand. So in the next few moments, I would like for us to ask the question and consider the thoughts in answering it. And that, that is, is God visible or invisible? Now, there have, some, there have been some that have attempted to use certain verses to show an alleged contradiction between these two ideas regarding this question. One of those passages being John chapter 5, verse 37, which says that God is invisible. It reads, And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me, Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So again, John chapter 5, verse 37 would claim that God is invisible. However, they look to passages similar to Exodus chapter 24, verses 9 through 11, and attempt to pit this passage against what we just read, where it says, again, Exodus 24, verses 9 through 11, then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. And as it were, the body of heaven and his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. Again, this passage would say that these people saw God, thus God would be visible. Thus our apparent conundrum, does the Bible contradict itself? Is God invisible or is God visible? First, I would like for us to consider that God is, in fact, invisible. We know from Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, that deity is, in fact, invisible. This word is oratos. Uh, it's a compound word. Oratos, meaning gazed at, visible, or even capable of being seen. And then ah, alpha, would be the negative particle, which is anti or non. So the, the word non-visible or anti-visible, we would have it, we would render it invisible in English. Thus, from this verse, God is not capable of being seen. He is incapable of being physically gazed at by human eyes. This is because God is a spirit. John chapter 4, verse 24. In dealing with the apostles, we see that the resurrected Lord made a claim. In Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 39, he there says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do 
thoughts arise in your hearts. Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. So Jesus defines certain characteristics of a spirit. Spirits don't have flesh and bones. Thus, physical beings are not the same as spiritual beings. They do not share or they do not have the same characteristics. Since deity is a spirit, deity then must be invisible. As a spirit, deity does not have flesh and bones. Deity would not have the same appetites as fleshly beings. Hence, deity cannot be seen. However, deity, God as we know him, has the capability to operate inside the physical realm. And deity of necessity can manifest itself within that physical realm. So then we consider that God is visible. If deity is able to work within the realm of the physics, physical world, physical realm, deity must also have the ability to become visible or seen. But how can this be true? This is true based upon how deity becomes visible, the how. I would ask the question, who has ever actually seen the sun? No one has. If you go outside your house when the sun is up and you point a telescope at this ball of light, you'll be instantly blinded. If you look at this ball of light through smoked lens, you'll see nothing but a dim outline. If you were able to approach the sun through outer space, you would be destroyed before its awesome power. Thus, no man can actually see or say that they have, in fact, seen the sun. However, when we see the sunrise, we see the photons coming from it. But typically, whenever we see the sunrise, we say, well, there's the sun. We've seen the sun. Without realizing it, we're using a figure of speech. No one has seen the eternal, invisible form of deity. However, deity has manifested itself to man throughout time. Now, how can God be seen? How can deity be seen? We note that God or deity can be seen through actions. We see this in the physical creation. Psalm 19, verse 1. It shows his workmanship. In Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold not the truth in unrighteousness, because that, which, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Then we see that you can see deity through his messenger. In Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and 21, it says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. And then Acts chapter thir or 7, verse 35. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. So God can be manifested physically 
through different symbols, different avenues. As, the, as we've seen before, it's different messengers, the physical creation, those who would possess his will. And third, how can we see God today? Well, we see God through his word. It is written of Moses in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. By faith, he, that is Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. He saw God, but how did he do it? The first two words of this verse, by faith. Then couple this with Romans chapter 10, verse 17. We get this faith through the word of God. Furthermore, consider Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. From this passage, we learn many things, but regarding this particular study, we know that God in times past has dealt directly with mankind. Secondly, he, de he deals now with man through his son, Jesus the Christ. And we know that the Father has an express image, also Jesus. The Greek word there for the express image is karaktar. Probably butchering the pronunciation of that word, but this term is where we get our word in English, character. This Greek word means a graver, referring to the tool itself or the person. That is engraving, also the figure stamped, that is an exact copy or representation. So Jesus is an exact copy of the Father. If we want to see deity, we look no further than to Jesus himself. Jesus con con uh, confirms this concept in John chapter 14, verses 7 through 9. If he had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you? And yet thou hast not known me, Philip. He that hath seen me hath seen the father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. They had the ability to see Jesus. They worked with him during his earthly ministry. And because of this, they were able to see God. And it was through his teaching, his manner of life, all of his conduct. Obviously, it would be a, a figure of speech in seeing the Father. This whole, the whole idea we've been discussing is primarily summed up, I would say, similar to carbon paper. If you have the second and or the third sheet, you know exactly what information the first copy contained without ever having to see it. That's the idea of an express image. That's the idea that Jesus was conveying when he told his apostles, you have seen the Father. This is how deity can be both invisible and visible. Invisible in the sense that physical eyes cannot ever gaze upon deity. Visible from the standpoint of figuratively speaking. Now we have considered passages tonight, which some have attempted to use against the inerrancy of the scriptures. They have tried in their ignorance and perhaps dishonesty 
to use different passages against each other, against themselves, to try to dismiss plain Bible teaching. Fortunately for us, as Christians, the Bible contains, and this is true of, of the book itself, but the Bible contains the very mind of Jehovah in word form. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. While it does contain verses that might be difficult for us to understand, and indeed are at some times, with proper study and proper reasoning, we have the tools to understand these difficult passages. Hard to understand is not impossible to understand. Now, we all must study the Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, and we must reason correctly with the facts that we learn. As such, we must not be guilty of the same intellectual laziness as so many around us, whether through dishonesty or lack of work or plain ignorance. We must all also be able to defend the truth against any of those who would attempt to discredit the Bible. People are not going to change. These supposed discrepancies creep up. And people who are dishonest or simply ignorant are always going to have questions. And it obviously helps us work out our own salvation. But I hope this study has been beneficial to you. I thank you for your attention and thankful again for the opportunity to speak. I will now stop.